Before we proceed, let's keep in mind this particular study was done in vitro, not a living organism. It has to be elevated to in vivo. So with that in mind, let us proceed. Obviously, we have to basically prelude with our disclaimers, just to, just to play it safe so we can get this information to you without being um, sequestered. Let's use that term instead. So to proceed, what are we looking at off to our right? We are looking at a chart. That chart is representing SARS-CoV-2 load inhibition in reference to a saline solution. Now I'm going to go do the percentage of the solution as opposed to the molar units. Now, 1.1% yielded an 88% SARS-CoV-2 load or viral load inhibition. Now, 1.5% resulted in total inhibition. Now, keep in mind, this is not a living organism. This is in a test tube, petri dish, or whatever. Yet, just the same, it is just fascinating. With this information, it led researchers to postulate potential new treatment therapies in reference to the pandemic of the day, utilizing no more than basically a saline solution. I know it sounds really easy and simple. They said it was basic science itself, but the eloquence of its ability to way it operates in depletion of cellular ATP levels in reference to the virus in question, virus, virus in question, is just simple, basic, yet very effective in vitro, not a living organism, until trials are conducted for us to validate the information where we can tell you directly that this study said this in an animal or human. But with that in mind, let us proceed. That's pretty amazing. Again, why they stuck with the 1.1% dilution uh, as opposed to 1.5, I don't exactly know. But however, though, our objective is not to interject publisher bias. It is just to reiterate the research as placed in order to basically avoid any potential subconscious or unconscious confounding or whatever. But let's proceed as follows. Here we go. Study reveals how a saline solution can inhibit replication of SARS-CoV-2. The use of hypertonic solution of sodium chloride at 1.1% reduced viral replication by 88% in tests involving infected lung cells conducted by researchers at the University of Sao Paulo. If the strategy proves effective in clinical trials, it could contribute to the development of novel prophylactic interventions to prevent COVID-19 or even treatments for the disease. I'm reiterating specifically from the research itself, which has also been submitted to the World Health Organization as well, for the truth seekers out there. Now let's get into the public release of the study, and then we're going to go into the full technical study itself. Please forgive me if I speak a little fast over certain points, because our time is limited, and I want to get as much information to you out as possible, even though I could do this all day if permitted. But to proceed as follows. Although the evidence suggests the use of saline inhibits viral replication, it does not afford full protection against infection, let alone a cure. It is very simple and cheap. It's already used prophylactically against other respiratory diseases and could minimize the severity of COVID-19 by reducing viral load. It could be added to safety protocols without replacing the use of face covering, social distancing, and vaccination, quoting the researcher. Hypertonic Saline is already adopted prophylactically to manage cases of influenza, bronchitis, rhinitis, sinusitis, and other respiratory disorders. So this is not necessarily something that's tremendously new. It's used quite often, which makes it even more enticing, or I should say seductive as a potential treatment. Proceed. A spray is sufficient for the upper airways while a nebulizer is needed to reach the lungs. These interventions can minimize the symptoms such as diseases, diseases, but the mechanism underlying the effects are poorly understood. And that we're going to elucidate. Quote, our explanation of this intracellular response to the hypertonic solution was basic science. But the findings of the study have evident applications in healthcare and clinical approaches to the management of various respiratory diseases. Quoting the researcher, quote, what we observed with regard to SARS-CoV-2 is likely to apply to other viruses as well since the mechanism concerned 
is part of the host cell's response to infection. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of a diversion here. Remember, August 31st, we had an interesting study that was uh, in regard to the correlation of ocean air and the reduction of incidence of cases and uh, mortality. Per se, breathing human and salt and rich air reduces rep respiratory droplet generation, may contribute to the effectiveness of cotton mask reduced incidence of death by COVID-19 near seacoast. Now, an interesting part too. Now, before we get into the, the study of the day, quote, elevated airborne salt concentrations locations along the U.S. Gulf and Pacific coastlines with strong inland oriented wind patterns and suppression of COVID-19 incidents and deaths per capita relative to inland counties was, uh, was by approximately 25 to 30%. Now, that is a study that we covered on our late night Saturday night data analysis. Now, with that in mind, as far as a correlation, just for looking for additional uh, uh, circumstantial evidence to say before we could actually uh, draw a strong, stronger correlation. Let us get back to the research now, but keep that study in mind. I'll link that in the, in the video as well, but to proceed. When NaCl molecules enter a cell, the membrane surrounding the cytoplasm is polarized owing to an increase in sodium ions. A little technical, but bear with me. As a result of this imbalance, a large amount of the cell's potassium is ejected to restore a balance of charges in the membrane. This mechanism is known as a sodium-potassium pump. When sodium chloride molecules enter a cell, the membrane surrounding the cytoplasm is polarized owing to an increase in sodium ions. As a result of this energy imbalance, a large amount of the cell's potassium is ejected to restore a balance of charges in the membranes. This mechanism, did I just repeat the whole dang thing again? It's known as a sodium potassium pump. Well, that's reiterate. Saturation due to the sodium potassium pump makes the cell expend ATP, adenosine triphosphate, one of the main sources of energy for the cellular processes. Consumption of ATP for cellular depolarization prevents the virus from using it to replicate. Quote, cells have to get rid of sodium via the sodium potassium pump and this uses up their energy store here it all comes together so there's no atp adenosine triphosphate left for viral replication simple basic mechanistic to proceed as follows the study also showed that the salt does not affect mitochondrial activity mitochondrial dynamics organelles involved in the cellular respiration and atp creation as well as other metabolic processes at these concentrations, the salt doesn't damage the cell, which may be why they decided to use a 1.1% uh, dilution as opposed to 1.5. I don't know. I'm just trying to in, uh, incorporate my own conjecture hypothesis into why they went to a weaker solution. We observed the, that mitochondria remained healthy throughout the process, according to the researcher. All right, now I'm going to get into the full study itself. It's going to be a little technical, but it really, really does bring everything together. And we're going to look more towards the conclusion of the discussion to proceed. Now, keep in mind also, too, if you look at the top of the article, uh, permissions are granted for the duration of the World Health Organization Declaration of COVID-19 as a uh, global pandemic as far as research and analysis to proceed. It is worth mentioning that hypertonic solution treatment is used to improve lung function in cystic fibrosis patients. Moreover, nebulized 3% hypertonic saline treatments for infants with moderate to severe bronchitis is safe without any adverse events, such as bronchospasm, cough, and wheezing aggra aggravation. Furthermore, a post hoc analysis of clinical trial, blah, 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 that shows, suggests that hypertonic saline, nasal irrigation, and gargling may have played a role in reducing symptoms and duration of illness caused by COVID-19. Now they're referencing another study. In addition, given available evidence, the scientific community has been proposing that saline irrigations with or without indicated additives may be safe for use in COVID-19 patients. And again, more footnotes. In that way, there are three clinical trials registered in ongoing status, according to clinicaltrials.gov, related to the use of hypertonic saline solution for COVID-19 treatment. This scenario highlights the importance of our results and reinforces the need for carrying out clinical studies for better understanding the benefits of the hypertonic saline treatments for COVID-19 patients. So remember, that's what it said in vitro. It's not a living organism as of yet. Everything else has been primarily just correlation. They have not able to show a causative effect, but 
when they bring it to living organism trials, that will be just fascinating. But to proceed and conclude, in summary, hypertonic saline solutions inhibit SARS-CoV-2 virus replication in vero monkey epithelial kidney cells and callo-3 human lung epithelial cells due to its perturbation of one of the several steps of the virus intracellular life cycle. Our results suggest that more than 185, or just say 1.1%, causes membrane depolarization, resulting in insufficient ATP stocks, adenosine triphosphate, available for virus replication. ATP levels get depleted by the sodium potassium pump. Virus, according to the study, may not be able to replicate. Therefore, being a general mechanism to avoid virus replication inside cells in vitro assays. Hence, the complete molecular mechanism underlying the observed phenomena may be more complex, involving several factors that together result in the inhibition of viral infection. Nevertheless, quoting, we highlight that in vivo experiments and clinical trials should be carried out in order to prove the efficacy of hypertonic saline treatment in humans with COVID-19. And wouldn't that be just an incredibly, incredibly simple, basic research study and in order to conduct, which can be done anytime, even starting today, and follow it up fairly rapidly depending on the course of the infection itself. Simple, basic, elegant. I really, really would like to see them proceed forward with those clinical trials in individuals or at least potentially an animal model. Some of these solutions are so incredibly basic and as I said before, mechanistic in, in its approach. Saline solution results in a very simple way of creating that sodium potassium pump, which causes the cell basically to expend its energy or its ATP that it normally needs for virus replication in order to basically get its whatever its electrolyte balance down or whatever you want to call it. Basic, simple, eloquent, the best, the best of medical research that you could possibly have to offer. Simple. This is a simple study. I don't know why it can't be conducted sooner instead of later. Again, I'm not making any recommendations per se. A lot of individuals and a lot of medical professionals are already familiar with uh, saline solutions and treatments of a certain disease and ailments as well. But again, enlightening, promising, and gives individuals a glimmer of hope in ending this, whatever, pandemic, we'll say. But again, just the same, beautiful, simple, maybe this information can help and actually improve the lives of certain individuals reduce potentially the severity of the disease over time when clinical trials are conducted. If it just works simple, cheap, and effective, wouldn't that just be wonderful? It'd be kind of really cool. And again, their explanation, and again, here goes a long goodbye, is really, really clear and concise. But again, thank you. I am gratitude towards the researchers, which I always am grateful, and as always, extremely humble to our well-enlightened audience. Catch y'all next time. See you then. Bye. And again, links will be there, including to the one on the reference to the ocean air uh, with salt and humidity as well too, which again, they, they were conducted primarily on, they were focusing more on droplet size, but now you can start tying in these other clues and you may be able to build or construct an entire new paradigm in reference to ocean air. Catch y'all next time. See you then. Bye.